something that comes up a lot with clients uh, when dealing with dynamics and hair is how they can achieve uh, tightly coiled hair that springs and bounces very realistically uh, in terms of its motion. And uh, one of the reasons this is difficult is because hair has a 15-segment limit. So because of that 15-segment limitation, it's very hard to create long, controlled hair like you'd see in a long, spiraling coil. Um, so there's a few techniques you can use uh, to actually create this kind of effect and basically a couple of tricks to actually build the hair and then using rigid body to animate it. Um, so in this case, we have uh, a coil of hair, kind of an example of what, what people are going for for the hair look. And uh, we'll quickly just look at how that was built. So if I unhide some of my source curves... Uh, we'll just turn off our hair filter here so you get a good idea of what's going on. So basically, uh, a source main curve was created in the shape of the hair uh, that was desired. And then linear curves were deformed by curve along the body at specific intervals. And so these curves overlap slightly over one another and continue and cover the full length of the main source curve. Once that was done, uh, the whole thing was oops, uh, duplicated and offset it in Y a couple times so we had multiple um, different uh, layers of this, these source curves and then from these we could actually build our hair from spline object so we ended up with this result of course which actually works quite well in the render and a couple things to note uh, when achieving that kind of effect if you look at the strand multiplying uh, we use a kind of a high strand multiplication and splayed at the tips just so we get a nice meshing of the hair at the actual borders. So when we render, it's nice and continuous looking. There's also slight frizz and kink applied just to give the hair some noise and again increase the meshing of the hair uh, at the joints. So once that's done, uh, the next step was to actually create the, uh, the rigid body objects to actually animate the hair. So this was fairly straightforward. Um, the best way to do this was to create a series of cubes. And what I'm going to do is just scale them down slightly and translate them into the position we want. And I can just duplicate that, translate it down, duplicate that again. So we've got three control objects there. Uh, let's turn on 3D geometry so we can see uh, what's going on there. Now to control this object for uh, rigid body what we're going to do is make the the top uh, object, control object, a passive rigid body object so we can actually animate it uh, manually and the two uh, children I guess control objects we want to make them active rigid bodies. So there we go. Now the next thing we need to do is just string them together using springs. So I'll use the uh, multi-constraint tool to apply springs between them. So just middle mouse click and select my control objects. And because we're already at uh, advanced frame, the springs are taking effect. So to go to the initial state, we just go back to the beginning and uh, we get the, uh, the, the coil actually spread out to its default position. Now what I'm going to do with these springs is let's just increase the actual uh, number of springs on the first one so it's a bit tighter at the root and then the dampening we can leave the same for the second spring um, we're just going to increase the actual dampening so it doesn't spring quite as much uh, anyway you can tune the settings and try and get the the behavior as realistic as you want uh, the last thing we want to do is just apply gravity um, to the actual dynamics and that's about it. Um, the next phase is just to envelope the source curves to the actual control objects. So I'm just going to expand my uh, curves here and just select all of them. And then what we want to do is just do envelope, set envelope. And we want to apply this as an animation operator. And I'm just going to select my uh, control objects one by one and the picking session. And then uh, that's about it. We're good to go. You can see the envelope's been applied to the source curves. And now when we actually animate or uh, move our source object, we can just play back the timeline. And because there's an inherent springiness, you can see them pulling up. If I go and move this guy around here a little bit, 
you can see we get some pretty nice motion with the hair coil following and kind of bouncing up and down uh, just to get a clear idea. I'll just turn off the geometry. There you go. So that's a really quick and efficient way to create um, coiled hair using rigid body dynamics and a few tricks for modeling.